Hi, I'm Chef Cody, and we're here at Fallbrook Winery with Ira. And we're actually picking some beautiful avocados straight off the tree. And actually, Ira, did you say that the avocados that we're going to be using on the salad was done a couple weeks ago? Yeah, the picked avocados that were picked two weeks ago are the avocados that we'll use in the salad. Avocados do not ripen until they're picked. And the longer they hang on the tree, the bigger size they get. We have two varieties here, the Haas, which he's using uh, tonight for the salad, and Fuertes, which are a little bit bigger, uh, but have the same oil content, and they're just as tasty. But if you ever really want to try something delicious, stay tuned and check out the salad that we're going to be doing in a few minutes. Hey, welcome to Catch the Spirit. This is Fallbrook Winery, and as you all know, I'm Chef Cody, and we're going to be having some fun with some really good wines. Uh, we're going to be doing a nice avocado salad with this beautiful Savillon Blanc, and then we're going to, the second course, the main course, is going to be really, really good. We got some excellent swordfish, and I want to show you guys a way of doing swordfish, and not necessarily serving a white wine with it. So we're going to actually do this BDX, which is one of the best wines that I've tasted here at Fallbrook Winery. And then we're gonna finish up with an interesting chocolate flan, and we're gonna be serving a nice Sandovese. And when I get to the flan, I'm gonna tell you guys some secrets that we did with it. We really had some fun with this flan. But the first thing I'm going to do is start with this lemon and get the salad rolling real quick. Now, if you're not familiar with this concept, I'm actually going to be grilling the lemon. Really nice and simple. We're gonna go ahead and cut an avocado in half. Now oh, that's a beautiful avocado. Then we're gonna get four nice slices. Got a spoon here and we're gonna spoon out four slices. Now, as I said, I've got some lemon grilling for this salad, which is going to probably surprise a lot of you to actually have grilled lemon, but that's one of my favorite combinations with avocado. And then we're going to do a nice vinaigrette in just a second. Okay. Now, we're going to go ahead. Then we're going to take a little bit of greens. And I actually am using beet greens and that surprises a lot of people to hear someone using beet greens in this manner but guarantee you if you try it you will truly fall in love with it and that's just the basic chiffonade on the beet greens then we're just going to rotate and now while that's finishing i'm going to go ahead and do the salad dressing i've got a pitcher here and it's a little burr mixer here and we're just going to start like so a little bit of garlic some shallots now what we have in here is actually grilled lemon and it's going to really surprise you because you're you're never going to ever taste something like this again unless you actually take the time to grill your lemon and yes, we are using the skin and the rind as well. There you go. And then a little black pepper. Olive oil and red wine vinegar. And then we're just going to... You want to get a nice work on this now the secret to this is to go ahead and add a little bit of Savillon Blanc directly in to get it started
And then we're going to go ahead and do the, a little bit of red wine. And olive oil. And then we're going to hit it again with salt and pepper. I'm going to try it real quick. Got a little spoon here. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that consistency. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. A little bit more salt. And you're going to get this great bitterness with this dressing that's going to really surprise you, but it's delicious. It works great with the palate. And a little bit more pepper. Then I'm just going to hit it one more time with the burr mixer. Now don't worry about all the pulp and stuff in here. That's what makes this dressing so special. Because you're going to get that bitterness from the lemon and then you get the, that great flavor from the uh, wine. And I've got a little bottle here that I'm going to pour the dressing in. And we're just going to pour that in like so. And try not to spill, which for me, I'm always going to spill, so I just get used to it. Okay, now there's the salad dressing ready to go. And now, salad dressing's ready, and the lemon is perfect. Now, like I said, it's just a really simple grilled lemon, and we're just going to take a little bit around the top. Then I'm going to leave a little piece on so whoever gets to try this can go ahead and do a quick squeeze with it, and you're going to be real impressed with this dish. And then we're just going to pour a little bit of salad dressing, like so. And I've got a little bit of Roma tomato here. We're going to do a quick chop. And then, after we get a nice chop there, like so, we're just going to take that and do a quick sprinkle over the top, like so. Now, okay. Now what we have here is an avocado salad with uh, grilled lemon, a little bit of beet green, and some Sauvignon Blanc salad dressing with uh, grilled lemon as well. Now the next dish we're going to do is this interesting swordfish. But before we do that, let's go over to Chesapeake Fish Company and have Mark Bailey give us a quick little tour. Uh, we don't have a retail shop, we don't sell to the public, but anywhere from a grocery store to a casino, hotels, restaurants, convention center, and personal chefs. This is our production area. This is where we cut fish, build the orders, ice things down. This is kind of the main hub of the operations. So what do we have here? It's just one of the species they're cutting here would be a, a, a Pacific cod. So we'll get that oh, okay. fish in, head it and gut it, and they'll fillet it into a uh, portion for individuals. When did Chesapeake Fish get started here in San Diego? 1915. We're coming up on 100 years here shortly. So. 1915? That's it. Really? That's amazing. Who do you supply to on the local market? We supply here locally in San Diego. Uh, Henry's Market, Sprouts Market, Windmill Farms, uh, Boney's, Harvest Ranch, a lot of the, the smaller more independent stores. Oh, okay. So your product is available in all the local independent stores in the area? Absolutely. From here through all up through LA, out through Palm Desert, we deliver with our own trucks six days a week. Okay. You're going to rotate all this stuff out by the end of the day? It has to. We're not like beef. We don't get better with age. So every day and every minute this stuff sits here, it, it's not getting any fresher. So. And okay. what other products do you actually get from the dock here locally? Locally, there's a vast variety of species, everything from spiny lobsters, sea urchins, you know, that's the uni that you see in sushi bars, that stuff goes right to Japan, 
We get uh, local white sea bass, California halibut, uh, Pacific yellowtail, amberjack family. We get sharks, different variety of sharks. And then the tunas, as they migrate by, we'll get a, a variety of bluefin to, to a yellowfin tuna. And you do know that later on today, we're gonna to be working with some of your beautiful swordfish, right? Absolutely, that's a local species that we get right here off the dock and can't get any fresher, better quality than that. So, do you have the swordfish I'm gonna be working with later? Absolutely, we had these guys cut it up for you, make sure it's ready to go, and this is uh, your sword loin. Oh, beautiful. Oh, I'm gonna have some fun with this. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you are going to be really surprised what I do with this later. You notice that beautiful red bloodline right there. Notice that the skin is still nice and firm on the fish and it's not lifting. This can't be more than a day old. I mean, it's just beautiful. One of the biggest things that I notice is most people are still back in the 60s and 70s with the old concept of fish chicken, white wine, red meat, red wine. So I want to play with a, a different concept real quick and see what you people think about this. And you're going to love it. And I know that because I tried it at home with my wife. And Linda, how was this dish? It was great, honey. It was great, honey. And in case you didn't hear it, yeah. she called me honey. <laughs> I feel real good about that. And we're also going to bring up Vernon. He's one of the winemakers here. And he's going to tell us about this delicious BDX that they're doing here. Come on up, Vernon. And ladies, he's single. Don't tell my girlfriend that, though. Don't tell his girlfriend that. Okay, now, Vernon, tell us a little bit about this BDX. I mean, I was really surprised at how great the flavors were with it. It, I, it just blew me away. The BDX is uh, part of our state series. It's, it's probably our flagship. I uh, consider it uh, one of our top shelf wines. It is made with five different grapes. Oh, really? The majority of the, the grapes that we use are the uh, uh, Cabernet, Semignon, okay. Merlot, and then blended in proportionally for taste and balance is Cab Franc, okay. Malbec, and Petit Verdot. Okay. Now, what I'm doing right now is I'm making a little bit of marinade for the fish. And you will find in the recipe that it says to marinate for approximately five minutes. Uh, we got a little bit of TV land magic going on here. So we're going to just cut that down to about, we're going to put some on and go from there. But um, anyway, the sauce that we're working with, I've got some shallots and some garlic in here with some of the BDX. And we're going to finish with these beautiful tomatoes here which uh, are seeded and skinned and just we're just gonna let it reduce but anyway I'm gonna go ahead and finish the uh, marinade as Vern grabs a couple glasses got a little bit of olive oil here and then we've got some fresh lemon juice what does BDX stand for good question BDX actually is a, uh, a play on uh, initials we use a, a type of yeast here at the winery that is called BDX, and it's um, based on a Bordeaux strain of yeast. Oh, okay. In, within the United States, uh, we're losing the capability of using some words that uh, traditionally come from France and part of the European Union. And what's that? Bordeaux happens to be one of them. Well, they want their region of uh, France back. Is that kind of like the champagne problem that yes. we had in the past? Yes, it is. Oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. So to keep it within class, we decided to go with BDX because it, it, uh, it rings of that same flair. Mm. And it's ours. Mm, okay. Can I give it a sample? Absolutely, I poured you a glass here. Oh, okay. Mm. So this is five different grapes. Five different grapes. So exactly how are you combining the, uh, the grapes for this wine? Well, the, the first thing we, we start out with is we'll use Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. Okay. And that makes the, the, the majority of the, the blend. And then from there, uh, the first thing we're looking for, of course, is fruit balance mm -hmm. and, and acid balance in the wine. Um, We've, we try to use the complete um, group of Bordeaux 
blend or blend grapes mm -hmm. that, that have been used traditionally. And uh, these are grapes that are grown here on the estate. So um, it's a matter of just blending for taste. Oh, it's, it's delicious. And for people out who's watching me try to continue cooking as we get this going, I'm actually going to add tomatoes right now. And you guys out in the audience is gonna love this. This dish is surprisingly delicious. <clears throat> And then what we're going to do is just stump these a little bit and then just let it reduce down. And there's one other thing I need to do. I need to go ahead and put the swordfish on. And we have some truffle polenta here that we're going to put on as well. Truffle? Yes, the mushroom. Someone asked the truff about truffle. It's actually the mushroom, the truffle mushroom, or the fungus. It's not really a mushroom. It's a fungus, and it's going to be fantastic. Now, go ahead, sir. Is the uh, swordfish considered a white dry fish? That's a good question. You know, I've got Mark here from Chesapeake Fish. Vernon just asked, is the swordfish considered to be a white dry fish? Well, it's certainly a white fish, but it's very moist. If you overcook it, you can certainly dry it out, just like any other protein. But uh, we use the, the rule of you just cook it to the texture and the, and the consistency that you like personally. But it's a very meaty, firm fish for people that aren't real fish eaters. It, it's a good place to start, that or a northern halibut. But uh, it's an outstanding protein. I'm going to go ahead and do the vegetable on this real quick. We're just using baby carrots and asparagus. Now, these are the green tip baby carrots. They're fantastic. So Vernon, tell me about some of the other wines that you guys do here because, I mean, I was real impressed with a lot of the products that you do. Like for instance, this beautiful Sauvignon Blanc that uh, I tried when I was here and I also used it, used it with the salad. Uh, give me a little back, bit of background on this product. Yeah, the Sauvignon Blanc is uh, won really quite a few awards this year up and down the coast. This year? Yes, this year in California. Um, these grapes come from Monterey County, a oh, okay. vineyard called Lockwood. And um, it's a very aromatic wine and mm. we ferment it that way. It, uh, you control aromatics by controlling the temperature of the fermentation. Okay. I really uh, like doing a Sauvignon Blanc. It, uh, it's a fun grape to work with. Sounds like it. You guys are right on on all your products. Who who do you guys sell to? Because I, I, I was hearing through the grapevine that you guys sell to a lot of hotels and stuff like that. Well, we have a few hotels that we sell to. Uh, majority of our wines go to restaurants within San Diego County. Oh, really? And, and uh, we have uh, several outlets, several outlet stores that, that we also sell our wines through, Costco being one of them. Okay. Okay. Now, one of the other things I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this bread. This is homemade, by the way, and we're going to have a little fun with it. Now, this is going to surprise a lot of you guys because we kind of did something weird with it. I can't, I don't, well, you can't quite tell on that piece, but you'll be able to tell here. We actually braided whole wheat and white oh, yeah. and did a nice roll. Like so. It's kind of like, you're from Louisiana, aren't you? No. Oh, you're not? <laughs> Too bad. Too bad, you should be. It's kind of like a king cake concept uh, that you'll find in Louisiana. But anyway, I'm going to do something kind of shocking. I'm going to actually grill the bread. And I'm just going to spread a little butter on there. Just grill a piece of bread. And look at that swordfish. It's coming along just perfectly. And now I'm going to flip the swordfish one more time. And to finish this dish is very, very simple. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to take the polenta and we're going to just place the polenta in the center of the plate. We're going to take this beautiful medium rare swordfish. It's just perfect right now. And we're going to go just like that. Then we're going to take these beautiful vegetables 
and we're going to put one there. You like vegetables, dude? You know this is your plate, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm catching that this is my plate. Okay. I've got a nice ladle here, and the sauce is just coming. Now look at the sauce. Isn't that beautiful? The heirloom tomatoes yeah. are just going to just blow you away with this. And uh, as Vern is about to tell you, you know something? I'm going to let you taste this sauce oh. just the way it is because I think you're going to fall in love with it. Isn't that so simple? That's really nice. You know, so, with the tomato and the wine, that really comes through. Yeah, and it's so simple to make. I mean, there's no thickening agent or anything in here. Then we're just going to take a little bit of sauce. We're going to go right over the fish and the vegetables. And I want you guys to realize now, like I said, we're using red wine. We're using a polenta with mushroom. Okay, I'm going to garnish it with two things. I've got a little basil here. And I'm going to put a little basil on the bottom like that. Then I've got the grilled bread that I just threw on. And I'm going to put that right up there like that. Now. Oh, that looks fantastic. You guys would fall in love with this dish. I guarantee you. But it is so simple. Now, what we have here is we have truffle polenta. And I've got some different mushrooms in there uh, that I just sauteed and ground up. And then I did a nice truffle and then a little bit of truffle oil. Then we have grilled swordfish cooked medium rare. Then we have a nice vegetable. And then we have this beautiful, beautiful sauce made with the BDX wine here at Fallbrook Winery. And, um, okay, Vern, go ahead and give this a sample. And you're going to find out ju it's just to die for. And don't forget to try the polenta, too. It's fantastic. I think you're going to enjoy the combination together. Should I try them both together or just Yeah, separately? try them both together. Okay. And don't forget to try a little wine with it. Mm. Oh, the truffle really really stands on its own mm -hmm. on the side and the swordfish is cooked to perfection mm -hmm. perfection now i have to do that again because that that's really good with the swordfish <laughs> now like i said Always remember and never forget, it's no longer uh, fish or chicken white wine, uh, beef or red meat, red wine. Play with it. Have some fun. I think you all will be very impressed with the things that you come up with. Vern, here's your plate. Grab your wine. I'm going to go try something different. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Vern. I got this great flan dish that I want to share with you guys. But before we do that, let's take a little tour of the winery. This looks interesting. What exactly are, are they doing here? Well, when we, one of the things that we think makes our wine so special is we hand punch down the cap through the juice during fermentation. Oh, okay. And, and what exactly does that do? Well, it, what it's doing is it's extracting the maximum amount of color and intensity of the fruit from the skins, which gives us a much deeper color. Okay. The fermentation lasts seven days, and we punch these, every bin is punched down four times a day. Four times a day? Four times a day, so that's, that, that's, why, the, that's why these guys are in such great physical shape, see? <laughs> And all you're doing is you're, you're pressing the cap and the skins down through the oh, fermenting man. juice. See, it's, is... it's a lot harder than it looks, isn't it? Yeah, but but that you is know, that I is what. I should bring out my workout partner. There you go. And do this a couple times a day. But that's one of the primary reasons why we're getting the amount of color and intensity in the fruit that we get from our red wines. Oh, okay. And we do this with all our wines. I'm tired already, dude. All right, man. All right, these are the aging cellars uh, at the winery. We have some of our estate uh, 
grown wines here. This is a Syrah from the current vintage, 2009. We'll taste a little bit of the Syrah here. This was put into barrel about three weeks ago, and it's already tasting pretty good. Good name for the tool he's using. It's called a wine thief, stealing wine from the barrel. Very important tool. What we have behind us is a series of uh, stainless steel tanks that are jacketed, so they have cooling uh, solution in them, which helps us to regulate the temperature of the wines. Several of the tanks we use for fermentation. Um, some of them are just, they just hold uh, the wines uh, before they're bottled, and uh, we're able to uh, do the chemical analysis and, and, and hold the wines in those tanks. We press off the juice and it goes either into a small container like these plastic ones or a large container depending on how much we have. Um, this tank for instance would hold about 12 tons of red grapes if that's what we were working with. Because everybody's tastes are different there isn't one wine that's just the best. Like I said I can't stress that enough. Um, tastes are individual, it's completely subjective so drink what you like, taste for yourself. Don't uh, read too many reviews, just go taste the wine. We've got time for one more quick dish. I'm gonna invite Dunk, and he's the master winemaker, to come on up and tell us a little bit about their great wine, the Sanovese. And also to pour me some of it. <laughs> Hi, Duncan. Well, Sangiovese, uh, as some people might know, is the probably the, the finest grape uh, in the Tuscany region of Italy. Italy has a couple of different grapes that would uh, vie for that title. Uh, something else up north, but in the Tuscany region, Sangiovese is king. So we're growing it here. Uh, we felt it would be a good match for our soils and climate, and we are really happy with the results so far. A little bit of the flan, and believe it or not, it's very light. Then we're just gonna take a little bit of the strawberry sauce just go like that and I actually put a little bit of essence of anise okay now I want you to try this and I want you to realize that that anise is really going to be very very smooth along with this wine Duncan's gonna tell you how it works now you gotta taste it with the wine Duncan Okay. <laughs> goes really well. You know, Sangiovese typical has a little bit of that licorice or anise. So it does really go very well. The strawberry is very smooth. Um, it's an interesting combination. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Thank you all for joining us tonight. And let me uh, get ready to feed you all real quick. <laughs>